My name is Abraham Great. Welcome to this platform. Here you will learn tips that will help you to connect the dot, destiny door, and every other dot that you could to experience a change of story. Now, these tips has the proclivity to move you into action, but it is working. Let's discuss today five ways to make your government accountable. We see that more and more it becomes important for citizens to demand from their leaders beyond what is being offered. You know, we can't just expect leaders to do what they want. The real truth is that we say democracy is the government of the people for the people and by the people, but in actuality, in many parts of the world, particularly developing nations, it is not the case. And what we see is that people suffer over and over and we have political leaders who wears, you know, suits or wears, uh, you know, barbarigas and abadas. Most of the third world nations are not lucky enough yet with great leaders. The real truth is that when the leaders are right, the nations move from underdeveloped to being developed because it takes visionary leaders to transform nations. Now hear this. Here are five ways that we can engage our political leaders or the government. I would like to reiterate here that while protest might be wonderful, it is not the only way that we can create a change in the country. While a lot of the motives why we protest are fantastic, it is not the only thing. And what troubles me when we have political rallies and we have protest is the kind and the number of lives that are lost in a lot of cases. I'm quite empathic about, I mean, uh, 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 about this. If you are a human being and you see other human beings dying, that is somebody's husband, somebody's wife, somebody's child, somebody's daughter or somebody's son, then we have to look what else and how else can we engage the government or hold them into account. We look at five ways that we can do that. Number one, demand public dialogue. We need to demand public di dialogue. It will be unfair to watch political office holders to take decisions and implement policies unilaterally. We can't just let them go or go there. And that's what happened in the Green Chambers or at the upper tier, which is the Red Chamber, the Senate. What we have is a lot of these people are friends of each other and they just come up unilaterally with what they feel or what they like. In some cases, they hear from members of public, but it has to be a lot more intentional. The essence of governance is the reflection of policies on the people. And when the people are made to be uncomfortable in their daily activities due to the inadequate government policy, then there is a disconnect, a, 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 a proper consultation between the people and the government. Hence, there must always be a periodic, open, public dialogue. And these dialogues can happen in many ways. It can happen in town hall meetings. It can happen in, um, in a way of solving. But we must engage them in public dialogue. We must get our leaders to talk to us. I mean, I get to do some town hall meetings, particularly in Lagos and sometimes in Abuja, where we organize this town hall meeting through the youth in uh, a community, the local uh, council, uh, and we do this in maybe universities, polytechnics, and stuff like that. And sometimes we do this online. Interaction between government uh, offices or political offices and the people should be regular, should be daily if possible. And in some cases, they can do this if not only the town hall meetings or debates uh, or, or every form of you know open dialogue. They can also engage by the way of paid survey, intentional qualitative survey to be able to fill the polls of the people. But we can make them there. We can send a letter to senators. We can send a letter to, uh, uh, you know, House of Reps members. 
We can send a letter even to the executive and no matter who you are, you can actually do so. And if they did not listen to you, you can keep on trying and make it as public as possible that you want to engage them on a particular subject. In some cases, I've had success at the local level, at the state level, and even as far as the executive, I've been able to actually enter in the country of my birth, Nigeria, to be able to enter into Asso Rock and have a dialogue on many issues and sometimes i've been able to get on the phone maybe with a governor or maybe uh, uh the executive uh, uh, uh themselves on a one-to-one -one telephone call to be able to say this is what is going on or i need answers to this question we can do this by the way of advocacy but anybody in the country actually have the sovereign right to be able to approach your political leaders number two we put an end to political labeling all government policies ideas should be equally measured scrutinized or accepted without bias or political affiliation or this or uh, uh, that group or this group or versus that this group this is the foundation of a societal dream in a working and a viable environment put an end to all this labeling you know you say oh it's uh, PDP that did it, it is APC that did this, or they begin to, you know, fight each other and they say, you know, this, uh, this group has done that. While a lot of these things may have some iota of truth, the labeling will just never stop. And it brings division, it brings continuous fight, it brings continuous acrimony. We can put an end to labeling. You personally just try to discipline yourself and just engage a more wise rational just maintain it as a human being that you're not saying oh you're not labeling particularly to just calling people by specific name and i know somebody will listen to me and say let's call a spade a spade the real truth is that we have called many spade a spade and it still hasn't changed anything one of the way that we do is whilst we tell the truth we should in every way that is possible avoid labeling number three let's listen more the truth is you can criticize or admit government policy uh ineffective or effective if you do not uh, 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 if you do not do it in a way that uh, uh, is detrimental even to your intent or your purpose if you don't listen to the people if you don't really engage them i'll give you an example sometimes government is actually now willing to listen to the people but the people just never stop agitating the people just never stop people are hungry and we understand the real truth is this no problem can be solved in a few days no specific problem can be solved in a few weeks and no major problem can be solved actually in a year so a lot of the time when we expect or when, once we expect engagement and once the engagement starts no matter how little it is we should take that window of opportunity appreciate the government office or uh, officers or officials that are engaging and then listen a lot more now what we have in most third world nations and particularly in nigeria what we have is that we talk a lot but we listen very less you know right as i'm speaking right now some people are thinking of an argument against what i'm saying whilst a politician is speaking Recently, as I, 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 some of you may already know, I am often invited to be uh, an analyst on, on, on some of the uh, major channels in Nigeria or in other countries. Now, one of the things that I notice is that as a panelist, once we sit down and we are to analyze something from the president or from the vice president or from any official, what most pa panelists are always looking for is first of all, how to attack. Sometimes people are not even carefully listening to see what is being said. People are just looking for the way to revolt. It's not the best way of engagement. We've got to learn to listen. And when we do listen, we need to do everything possible to engage our best rationale in processing the information that we have received. Number four, avoid political destructions. Enough of people character assassination or shaming due to different instances or public or, or, or public opinions we all have opinions and we all have a way in which we want one policy to go or the other 
no one is an island or politically uh, political wisdom on themselves as much as we review our own personal daily life it's still not perfect some of us would know that we have not even run our own personal life well or run a family well yes we demand more for people that we have voted for or that were put in a place of authority to govern over us but we must do this that our political correctness must be not to, we, we can't be politically correct because that will cage us but we have to be political we have to be polite <laughs> we have to what we may not be politically correct but we have to be ethically polite we have to find every way to exhibit decency hence we may lose the people that we're trying to actually engage with number five use the media in some society the media is the fourth estate of the realm that is the fourth tier of government you know that we have three tier of government which is the executive the legislature and the judiciary but in this case in most society in a very same society the media and we're lucky that even in our country the media plays a huge role we must engage the media we have the social media and we have the mainstream media. When we talk about the mainstream media, we talk about the TV stations, we have the news, we have the radio. When we have issue, I like some of the programs that we have in some countries where you can call in on radio, where you can, and sometimes we may not know. And this is an opportunity for government to actually have officers and people and staff who engages with those channels and listen to what people are saying. When people are calling in early in the morning or in the afternoon during lunchtime and they're complaining about government, it's an opportunity for the executive, for the legislature to be able to listen and feel the pulse of the people. And this will help to uh, you know, come up with policies and the way forward. But as a person, as a citizen, you have the sovereign right. You have the right to be able to engage. You can write a letter to your commissioner and if they do not you can actually go to their office and say you want to engage them on a particular issue but we can use the media one thing that is uh, that you must not forget is that our constitution now right is to demand more and more from our government it's our right it is your right but never stop but as we do so we do so with maturity we do so with a limited level of agitation because once we engage so much agitation sometimes the dialogue door closes it is very possible for us to be able to engage government we've had success in many ways through advocacy and i'm giving these five ways but let me know your comment either you agree with me or you don't disagree or you disagree with me the major motive for me doing this particular video is that we may be able to reduce the number of lives that have been lost if you enjoy abraham great Please click on the subscribe button for more videos, it is working.